Hey there folks, this is GreenyXI welcoming you back to the Green Vlog. Today is the 27th of December 2018 and I wanted today to be a Christmas haul video. It'll be a mixture because I didn't do a birthday haul video this year. It'll be a bit of iron with it as well, but mainly the Christmas stuff and I just want to show what I add. I don't know, I do whatever you so. <laughs> uh, start with the games, is it? I got this one for my uncles. Spiral Trilogy. I was waiting, I was waiting around for that, whether to buy it, whether not, and I thought, okay, I'll get it, but I'll have it for Christmas instead. And it is. I started Spiral One because I want to do them in order and I want to plat each one as I go along because they're simple plats if you've seen the list. Um, it's really good remake, just like the Crash Bandicoot remake's really good for PS4. It's like they've got the visuals, obviously. A million times better than the PS1 version. They've reimagined the soundtrack. I think it's like orc mm. I don't say orchestrated in case I'm wrong. <laughs> but they've redone the soundtrack anyway. And you can go to the menu at any time and change it back to the original soundtrack if you want to do that, if you prefer the PS1 sort of soundtrack. So I thought that was really nice. And everything about this is just really good. You can walk between levels you've found. So you don't need to go and find the gates again, for anyone who's played Spyro before. I'm assuming a lot of people have. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really good. There was one floor I found. There's always something, I know. <laughs> uh, and that is the loading times going into a stage. But the PS1 version had that as well. Um, but at the same time, while it's loading, I found it can do something interesting. It does this little visual of Spyro flying into the level while it's loading. And you can sort of press the fire breathing button to breathe fire while it's loading. You can make him go up, down, left, right while he's flying. You can ram a bit faster, I think. So it's a bit of an interactive loading screen, which is a bit better than nothing. <laughs> a bit better than just waiting for it to load for ages. And it is about half a minute, I think. Somewhere on there. Well, it feels like it. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't played Spyro 2 or 3 yet. Uh, this version, I've played the PS1 versions. But I'm sure I love them just as much, and I'm sure they'll do the same sort of thing with those and just improve them. There's no point going back to the PS1 version of Spyro 1 now, at least. To me. Except for nostalgia, say. Even more nostalgia, I suppose. Anyway. The other game I got, also for my uncles, is Dragon Quest XI. Now, I just recently finished playing Dragon Quest but all the Dragon Quest to date, except for Dragon Quest X and any of the spin-offs, because Ten is the MMO and spin-offs. I might get on to it sometime. I've been thinking about Dragon Quest Heroes. Sometime. But anyway, I played through all of those, one to nine. And I reached a point where I just mentally could not play another one. So when this first came out, I could not buy it for myself because I knew I wasn't gonna play it for yonks. So I waited till Christmas. And now, I'm going to be going back to it. Sorry, it's shiny. It's still got the plastic on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be going back to it. To the series. And I actually can't wait. I actually want to try it out. But I want to finish off another game first, and we'll get to that later. What I've been doing lately. So, there's that. They're the games I've been having. I've heard good things about Dragon Quest XI. So, well, some people are saying it's the best one. Some people are saying it's so easy that it gets boring. I don't mind an easy RPG, I'd rather that than level grinding all the time, so I'm quite happy with that. As long as the visuals are nice, the areas are interesting, the music's nice, I'm very happy. But I've heard mixed things about the music as well, so I'll get my opinions on it when I get to it. I've tried to avoid reviews as much as possible. So, so yeah, they've made two games that they have for Christmas. I also had a couple of books. First one is the one I've started. It's called The Night Circus by Aaron mm, Morgenstern. It's not an author I'd heard of before. I think it might actually be a first proper big published book kind of thing, as far as I can tell. Because it's making a big thing of her next book coming out in 2019 on the Penguin Books website, so I think this might be her first one, The Night Circus. And it is, well, you can imagine what sort of story it is just from the cover. It's very stylized, it's very poetic and whimsical. It's about this, funnily enough, it starts off with a prologue where this circus just pops up in the middle of nowhere. And it only opens at night. There's a sign saying open at night. It reminds me of Needful Things, Stephen King, in that sense. A shop just pops up and then opens whenever, gets everyone interested, kind of thing. And the circus tent, instead of being like the usual red and white striped, or maybe blue and white striped, 
is like uh, it's black and white, completely black and white. So just like the cover, is that sort of art style <clears throat> imagery going for it, and that's really good. Other than the other than that though, other than the prologue, it goes into the story in the first couple of chapters, I guess. It's like dates. Each chapter is like a date. It's got a name and everything. And the, yeah, the story is more about these two magicians, real magicians, like not a fake kind who just pulls a rabbit out of a hat, but proper magicians who can make things levitate really, not just like with strings and stuff. You know, w proper wizards, proper sorcerers maybe. It doesn't use that term. <laughs> it's two of them. They're not. Too, they each get a child to sort of learn magic for them, and it keeps mentioning that there's going to be this battle at some time, this competition between the two kids to see who wins. I haven't reached that point right now, it's just the kids growing up and learning and everything like that, so I really like it. Very poetic, very whimsical, very magical, very fantasy. Yeah. From the name Night Circus, you can probably imagine the sort of the sort of book it is. So it's really good. I really recommend it so far. I checked the review up before buying it, you know, it's risky getting a new author kind of thing. And there's a lot of really positive stuff, but it says the ending's a little bit naff, but <laughs> see that one get to it. I've only read like 70 odd pages, so I, I don't know too much yet. The other book. Oh yeah, Night Circus I had off a mate of mine who lives around by me. As well as something else. I'll get to that in a sec as well. <laughs> I had the other book uh, off my parents, which is Interesting Times, the next Discworld novel, the 17th one. I've read 1 to 16 so far, Interesting Times is going back to the Unseen University and what really got me excited for it is bringing back some of the best characters in the series from like the first two books, Rincewind, the ship magician, there he is, and Luggage, his sort of treasure chest, his, his luggage that he that can walk around on its own and has like a universe inside of itself so that when it eats things it stores them and then they can spew them back out including people and things like that. <laughs> and I love those two characters for that reason. They're amazing. And if you um, if you haven't read any Discworld, what are you doing? <laughs> it's comedy fantasy. It's not it's it's not um it's not strict fantasy. It's taking the piss out of the genre a bit. But it's it's amazing. And I can't wait to get started on this one once I finish Night Circus. Yeah. I, something to look forward to. Okay, what else did I have for Christmas? I had Oh yeah, the other thing I had off my mate from Around By You. I had X-Files Season 7, because I finished Season 6 a week ago maybe, and it ended really well. I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't go into the plot, but it ended really well. And I'm looking forward to starting this, but I'm watching something else at the moment, coming to the end of another series on Netflix. Um, again, I'll mention that later when I get to what I'm actually doing right now. So. Season 7 of X-Files. I have no idea what it's about. I have no idea what's going to be going on in it. 22 episodes. That's all I know. <laughs> That's from reading the back. So, yeah, X-Files is a big thing for me and I love it. I've only watched each episode so far once kind of thing, but I still really enjoy it. Uh, it'll probably be one of the rare series I'll actually go back to once finishing it. Maybe a year down the line or something. And actually try and watch again. There are many series I'll do that for. I normally move on to new things, new things, new things. And try and watch as much as as much different stuff as possible. But that was what I went for this time. Also off my mate, a couple of smaller things. Haribo sweets. It's my favourite type of Haribo. And Tankfastics. The, sh the sh sharp ones, sour ones. But, so they're good and you also got me a box of M&M, peanut M&Ms, which I love. Uh, it's actually like a box, but a packet inside. <laughs> but, you know, it's peanut M&Ms. I love them. So that's... Uh, what else? Oh, I had my watch. I had this up the parents, a book and a box, and some clothes. With it. And it's really nice. It's a G-Shop one. I haven't had a new watch that I've really liked since oh, a long time ago. The last one I had was like one of these ones that I'd have just so I could get bashed about kind of thing. This is a nicer one for me. So, I also had a jacket, some new jeans. I like to have a pair of new jeans, usually once a year, just because, you know, they get skinny jeans. 
they get stretchy, they they just turn to shit, basically. So you gotta try and replace them moderately often. <laughs> yeah. So otherwise, otherwise, otherwise. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna talk about my birthday stuff as well. Like I said, I didn't say it about it in uh, in a birthday video. So the mate bought, bought me some stuff for my birthday. The Devil is a part-timer. Now this is an anime which I, I meant to watch for a little while now. It's from the Azumanga Dio people. You know, the brilliant, the brilliant school slice of life comedy series, Azumanga Dio. It's from those people. I can sort of guess what it's about. It's gonna be one of those comedies again. Where one of the workers is supposed to be Satan, has a tail or something. Probably her with the wings. <laughs> I don't know anything about it really, but I think it's going to be pretty good. And considering it's only a short series, you know, it's no, no risk when you start it up and all that. So that's good. You also got me the Bayonetta film. I do like me a bit of Bayonetta. I'll be getting Bayonetta 3 when it comes out, probably. Um, Bayonetta Bloody Fate. I have no idea if it's any good or not. I've never read or seen any reviews. I've never heard anyone talk about it. I don't know. But if the cinematics of the games are anything to go by, I think it's going to be something really good, so I'll be checking that out sometime soon. I've been so busy, even since my birthday in August, the end of August, I haven't had a chance to look at some of this properly. And he also got me Tales of Vesperia, the film. Well, with Tales of Vesperia coming back out, the remaster to PS4, you know, first time on a Sony console outside of Japan, I think, um, I am going to be playing through the game. And then checking out the film so that I understand the story again. Because I haven't played it since the 360, and that's a long time ago now, so. Yeah. In terms of the speed, first strike. I'm waiting on that one. Finally, he got me. Oh, wait, he did give me something else as well. <laughs> Dark Tower, the Gunslinger. I love Dark Tower, I love Stephen King. The books are incredible if I haven't tried them. But this is a comic. There's plenty of graphic novels, sorry. <laughs> Uh, there's quite a few of these out there, I've noticed. I'm not sure where this fits into the graphic novels. I'm going to have to Google and then get into it and read it. And I will do. It's only short, so, you know, it's, if I like it, I move on to the follow-ons from this. So there's plenty of them. So that's something to look forward to again. I keep saying that, but it is. <laughs> Finally, for my birthday, he got me... Oh, hold up, hold up. Hopefully they don't fall. Nope, we're good. The Zelda Twilight Princess manga. I think there's a fourth one coming out as well, if it's not out already. So I'm going to grab that as well. Uh, I haven't tried them yet. I love Twilight Princesses. One of my favourite Zelda games. But Sane is one of my favourite Zelda games. I like most of them. <laughs> the modern ones ain't quite as good, but... They're still playable. They're still better than most adventure games out there. So <laughs> I'm happy. But yeah, manga for the Zelda ones. I've got like the Four Swords ones, the Ocarina of Time manga. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. For, for someone who's a fan of Zelda, they're a good fun read, you know? Nothing serious, nothing. So, I'll be getting down to those. <laughs> uh, for my parents for my birthday, I got Octopath Traveler. I might have mentioned, I might have actually mentioned this in a, in a vlog before. Have I had a vlog since my birthday? I don't know. But, I still haven't finished it. I'm about 30 odd hours in, and I'm starting the chapter threes. Because there's something interesting about Octopath Traveler where you have eight different characters. At the very start, you can choose your main character out of the eight, and that's where you start in the world map. Like, that's the town you start in, that's the main story, that's your main character that you can't take out to your party, even when you collect all the other characters, all the other party members. And it is worth is worth picking up. I find, this is why it's taken me so long, that once you've done the first chapter, collected all the characters, been around quite a bit of the world, you know, a chunk of it, I find that then when you get into the chapter twos for each character, where you have to go around the right places for each of them again, it's a very repetitive structure to the game, and that put me off and bored me a little bit and made me put the game down for quite a while. Now, I'm starting the chapter 3's with, I think his name is Alberic, the, the knight. Um, he's the character I chose to start the game off with, and I think it was a good decision, because he's really powerful, and he can use a couple of different weapons. And 
things like that. So I do enjoy it. It's from the people behind Bravely Default, which is another game I like, and I love the style, the very serious sort of browns of the JRPG. I don't play many ga many games that have that sort of art style. So I love it. It's all 2D by the way. It's all 2D. The music is stunning. Every song is very good. Not memorable maybe, but very catchy when you're playing it. It suits the environment at least. So yeah, the characters, each of them are really good. But I find myself now, maybe because I've been stretching out too much and playing it too much, I'm finding myself now sort of skipping through the text instead of listening to the voice acting and just reading it really quick and getting the general idea instead of going for the details. But that's just me. I'm not doing side quests either, maybe I should be. <laughs> and I've finally decided now to just use the same four party members all the way through the game, changing out the fourth one for the one who has the main plot point and needs to be in your party for that part. You know, whenever you need to. But I do have a main party of four and that's Albrecht. Uh, I can't remember their names. Uh, the white, the priestess, the Yuna, <laughs> uh, the white mage. Uh, I used the black mage. Um, and the fourth one I change out. Usually I like to have, she's that wild feral woman from the forest. Um, Hanek, something like that. With the bow and arrow, the hunter, the huntress. Who's like Gao a little bit from Fantasy Six. Takes the monster skills and well, uses them. So yeah, that, I think it's pretty good. It's not a game I'd ever replay, I don't think. I'll be glad to get it done, <laughs> to be honest. So, it's that. And I want to finish that before I go on to Dragon Quest XI, because I don't like having two massive games going at the same time as possible, unless the Let's Play for one of them, which is it's a different situation for me. <laughs> I've also been playing... Get some stuff up the way. I bought this for myself, not long ago. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm sure you've heard of it lately. <laughs> Yeah, I've collected a lot of characters. I've been doing classic mode mostly. I've played a little bit of World of Light, maybe an hour. Not much. I do like it. I love that it's like the old event matches. That challenge mode from the old Smash games where you have set challenges during fights and you still have to complete them. But it's mixed into a story environment and a world map to travel around. I love that. So I, I do like World of Light. I've only got stuck once so far in the first hour. That was embarrassing. <laughs> I always thought I was pretty good at Smash, but this feels very... I'm not very good at this one yet. I don't know why. I'll get better. I still like Zelda and I'm still decent with her, so whenever I can I'll use her. <laughs> In the online mode, it worked. I didn't have any problems. No lag, no stuttering, no disconnects, you know? It, it all worked really well with a mate who lives in, of mine who lives in America, so... Yeah, <laughs> I'll be playing more online Saturday night actually. I also bought myself because I had a bit of a wage increase at work. I, I treated myself with something that maybe was a little bit too expensive for what it is, but it is my favourite anime, my favourite manga, my favourite visual novel. You get the idea. <laughs> and ignore the box, it's not hentai uh, or whatever. It's just what Japanese people do, you know? They like to sex up things to sell it. Uh, when they cry or Higurashi. I've got a massive Let's Play on the channel if you want to have a look. It's not finished yet, still waiting for more arcs to come out on Steam. But it's a murder mystery. If you've been with me through my channel, then you'll probably know what it is. It's a murder mystery in a rural Japanese village where every arc is a different killer between the kids. And behind it all, there's this further mystery about what's really going on. Because it's all to do with curses. And obviously curses are unreal, so there's something real going on behind the scenes to make all this seem like it seem like it's a curse. And you've just got to piece it all together. But it's nice. This is a nice box set. It's got season one <laughs> with Rena. The best psycho. I'll have you know. <laughs> uh season hold on, let's get him in order. Season two, or Kai, Higashi Kai. That's the one where all the answers come out, all the answer arcs. I love Kai as much as the first season. And Rai, season three, which is like five episodes, and I think it's like, if I remember right, I haven't seen this very often, is where things actually work out right for them, for once. And it also comes with a bit of art, like art cards and stuff. And they are really nice, actually. I don't normally care that much about art cards and things like that, but these ones look really nice, so I'm, I'm happy with them. 
and I actually want to watch more. I've only seen the first arc. I've I've watched Higurashi a couple of times before, which goes against my I only watch things once kind of thing. But when's my favourite things? You know, you we watch. I want to. <laughs> so yeah, that's everything I bought for myself, had for myself lately. I've been watching a bit of Netflix with The Haunting of Hill House. That's where I want to finish before going back to X Files season seven or go starting that. And it is, it's, it's good. It's got good moments. It came out in ha on Halloween and on Netflix. It's got good moments, but it is extremely slow. It's pure horror. There is no action to it. Like it's not like Resi, where uh, you have a lot of action to push forward the horror and keep you interested. It's pure horror, and it's more about. Um, okay, okay. Let's get a plot out. These, this family lives in a big mansion. They're fixing up the house so that they can sell it. So it's all a bit run down and got a pass and everything. And it's haunted. There's about, ooh, I think it's five kids and the, and the two parents, the mother and father. And they get haunted. And throughout the series, it shows how they have to leave the house and things like that. But at the same time, it's like a two part, two dimension kind of thing where Every now and again, or a lot of the time, it goes to them as adults once they've left the place and how they've had repercussions from all the nightmares and traumas and whatever of the house. So it sort of switches between the kids and, the ad and them as adults kind of thing, a lot. i got two episodes left and I've enjoyed it a lot. Like I said, it's slow as hell, the pacing. I like to put the earphones in so I can be scared shitless every now and again and wake me up. <laughs> I wouldn't rewatch it, I don't think, but if there was a season 2, I don't know how it's going to end, but if there was a season 2, I think, yeah, I would go back to it and watch more, it's good. And another series I watched, more around Halloween, was Sabrina, season 1. Now that was good, some of the acting's wonky as hell, and it's cheesy as shit, even though it's meant to be like a dark version of Sabrina, more, more related to the comics, the, yeah, the comics, than the cheesy comedy version that we know of from, was it Nickelodeon? No. I don't know what it was of. Sabrina was on ITV, it might just be on CITV or something in the UK. <laughs> but yeah, Sabrina season one was good. I haven't seen the Christmas episode that came out lately. But I will. I'll get on to that before New Year's. New Year's is over. <laughs> um, yeah. Also bought myself, there's been January sales. If I'm seeing them on the PS4 store, it's been January sales, which are incredible. There's a shit ton of deals on me. And I got the non games and Zero Escape Something Dilemma. I've played the first non games all the way through once. I enjoyed it enough. Second one, a little bit. Third one, not all. So I'm looking forward to going through those on the PS4 version, the port. PS4 port. Because... I think I would have more time for it now. It's the same people who did Danganronpa, it's that same sort of visual novel where they're all trapped somewhere and they die off now and again. And, but with the non games, it's all number based puzzles. If you get it wrong, they die, stuff like that. There's a bit of room escape element to it every now and again. And there's a lot of multiple choice stuff going on. You have like this screen where you see where you could have gone a different way, you can go back and choose a different decision, a different action, and then get back into it. They are really good. They just don't have that big um, a big budget feel that Danganronpa does to me. It doesn't have that uniqueness to it in that sense to me. But I did enjoy the Vita version years ago when I played them. So yeah, they're good. I think that is about it, no? I actually think that is about it. Obviously I've got some sweets and chocolate. I can't get enough sweets and chocolate. <laughs> Never. That was like from work, from the parents, from everywhere. I don't know. Where does cheap sweets and chocolate come from when it's Christmas time? It just comes out of Norway. It's like it rains sweets. <laughs> and yeah, just having a look on my bed to see if there's anything else. I don't think there is. No, I think that's about it. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about as well. Dan come up a V3 Let's Play. The one that's been going really slow and an episode might go out once a, once a week, sometimes. It's because I have been extremely tired lately with a lot of work. Christmas is a busy time when it comes to work and I've been, I've 
I've made a few real life friends, which I haven't had in a while since uni, because I spent too much time with YouTube, too, a bit too much time at work, and a bit too much time just closed up in my room playing games. So I reached a point where I um, I needed to get out and just socialize more. Cause it was affecting me and that, you might have noticed, I don't know. I felt a bit distant from myself a lot of the time lately. And I don't feel 100% about it, but I, I do feel a bit better now that I'm getting, about, getting out a bit more. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, I think that is that. <laughs> I think I'm finally done. Oh, well, hold on now. For those of you who aren't bored by this overly long video, <laughs> I've been reading this. I borrowed it off someone I know. Civil War. I have never gotten into Marvel and everything like that. I think the only one I ever watched a while ago was Dark Knight, and I don't think that's Marvel, is that DC? <laughs> I don't know, that probably explains a lot, doesn't it? That probably shows a lot of how much I watch or read this sort of stuff. But this is an omnibus for Civil War, the basic one, another one with all the different characters spin off sort of comics, graphic novels. Um, I'm enjoying it enough, I'm going to read through it all. Give it back to my maid and probably never go back to this sort of stuff again. It's not because I don't like it. It's obviously well drawn. Um, but it's just not something I can get into, the sort of superhero sort of stuff. I like the more interesting ones. Yeah, Storm, you know. Get a hurricane on the go, get some blizzards, you know. I like that. But when it's just the superheroes who can just, like Superman, you can fly a bit, you can punch things, like Chris Redfield. That doesn't interest me. Spider-Man a little bit more, you can fling webs, but that's not that interesting. A lot of the abilities and stuff, they don't interest me that much, so I never really got into it all. But I did like Deadpool and Deadpool 2, but that's because there's a bit of comedy and it's like a different, a different take on the genre, I think. Just, again, taking the piss out of the genre. So there's that. And that's about it. I, let's play-wise, I do want to finish off Tank them up with V3, and then I need to decide on the next game. I've got a couple in mind. I don't want to mention them. One is a PS1 game. Two are PS1 games. One is one I know I could make a lot of notes for. One is one that I would go into blind. I'm not sure which would be more interesting, because I say blind. I probably played a couple of hours worth when I was little and I never went back to it. So I got that year. The one that I can make a lot of notes for is one that's an extremely hard game and would take a lot of effort for myself. So would I be able to keep up with that when I can't even keep up with a visual novel like Danganronpa that's just reading the screen most of the time? I don't know. <laughs> but I won't mind giving it a go. So this is a game I want to showcase and a game that's probably not been played too much by too many people. Even if the first game, this is a sequel, even if the first game was incredible and one of my favourite games, I'm not sure the sequel was played as much. Sadly, <laughs> this is a good game, and no matter how much people complain about it not being like the first game at all, it is a good game. Yeah, that's about it. I'm going to leave it there, because I won't stop talking. <laughs> this has been Goonie XI. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good Christmas and everything, and I hope you have a good New Year to come. I'll see you again in a bit with more Danganronpa. If you want to see more vlogs, give me a shout. I'll, I'll think of things to bring up, I'm sure. Even if my days are not interesting, I can still talk the arse of a donkey? Is that, the... <laughs> Is that how the saying goes? <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's about it really. Thanks for watching folks. See you again in a bit.